Qualifying for the Las Vegas Grand Prix is over and it was a crazy wet weather session where we got to see the wet tyres actually be used, which is a bit of a rarity in Formula 1. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, qualifying is over, and as I mentioned, it was a very wet day, where we got to see the wet tyres get used properly for the first time since Brazil qualifying last year. At least, I think that is the case. And once again, like we saw in Brazil last year, the wet tyres were perfectly fine, and they actually worked, despite the fact that the drivers generally hate them. And we got to see them really get used due to the cool conditions, meaning that the intermediates were not really able to fire up, which is why it took quite a long time before we actually saw the intermediate tyres get used. The wet tyres, of course, have a lot more grooves in them, and those grooves mean that generating tyre temperature in the cold conditions like the Las Vegas evening was quite easy. And it was a qualifying session that got drier and drier, as the session went on, and not only that, the track then got faster and faster, and you can see that when you look at all of the lap times set by Lando Norris during the qualifying session, you can see how the times massively tumble during this session. As ever though, let's compare the first proper lap in Q1 to the pole lap in Q3, so we can see how the track conditions changed and how the drivers were able to find confidence. And when you take a look at these two laps, you can see some massive differences, which does make sense given that Q1 was on full wets and Q3 was on intermediates. But it has to be said, the full wet tyre performed very well, at least at this track as there was only 4.2 seconds difference between these two laps. You can see in Q1, Lando Norris simply cannot carry the same amount of speed through the corners, which makes sense. The start of the lap is significantly slower, which also makes sense, because I imagine the final corner is an absolute nightmare in full wets. But also, you can see that at all of the breaking points in Q1 when it was wetter, Norris has to brake earlier and slow down more in order to get the car turned around the corner. Also, in the full wets, some of the corners that are flat out become actual corners, such as turns 10 and 11, where there is a big lift, and also the final corner. There was some slower laps earlier in Q1 as well, but that was more just learning what was underneath them, as we saw with Fernando Alonso as his first lap took over two minutes to complete. One thing that did surprise me was just how clean the drivers were overall. There was a lot of yellows, but there wasn't any red flags, showing that in general things were pretty tidy between the drivers. Of course, Albon hit the wall, as did Oli Behrman, but other than that, it was a pretty clean session. So we've seen how the times changed during the session, but now what about the top speeds that the drivers are able to reach? Well, to the surprise of no one, the top speeds were a lot lower in qualifying than you would expect from the Vegas circuits. Generally in the dry, top speeds reach over 350 km per hour. But in the wets, there was no DRS, and also some of the drivers may be running with slightly wetter setups, giving them more downforce, which then leads to lower top speeds. One team and driver that did take a bit more downforce by the looks of things was Charles Leclerc and Ferrari, as Charles only reached a top speed of 328 km per hour. McLaren, Mercedes, and Red Bull all reached higher top speeds, showing that they still have a bit less downforce on their cars, so should be even stronger in the dry race. Further down the field though, it definitely looks like the majority have a dry setup, as Williams, Alpine and Racing Bulls all have pretty high top speeds. The fastest car on a straight line was the Racing Bulls, as they reached 336 kilometers per hour with Isaac Hajar. Of course, Hajar could have had a bit of slipstream, but it does go to show how the lower down teams have to still run with less downforce than the top teams, because they can't really afford to bring multiple variations of rear wings. And it does mean that they could be pretty tricky to overtake in the Grand Prix if they are running with less downforce because, well, 
they are going to be faster down the straights and therefore harder to overtake. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video so far then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. But now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Ferrari. For Ferrari then, qualifying for Las Vegas was another disappointing affair as Charles Leclerc was only P9 for the Grand Prix and he has a lot of work to do if he wants to score some good points. But teammate Lewis Hamilton had an even more depressing qualifying session as he qualified in last place. And look, for Lewis Hamilton, I know it was wet, but the way he went out was pretty embarrassing. He slowly turned and ran over a bollard, and then ran over that same bollard again, getting it stuck under his car. But just how bad was Lewis Hamilton's Q1 performance? Well, let's compare the Q1 lap of Charles Leclerc to Lewis Hamilton to see where Lewis lost out. And when you take a look at these two laps, a lot of the damage is done at the exit of turn 9 through 10, 11 and 12. Through this section of corners, Hamilton is over 20 kilometers per hour slower than Charles Leclerc, and you can see the time immediately just fall away. Through this section alone, Lewis Hamilton loses over one second to Charles Leclerc. In the Grand Prix, I expect Ferrari will take a new power unit and setup for Lewis Hamilton and start him from the pit lane to see if they can try and do what Max Verstappen did back in Brazil. The only difficulty for Lewis and Ferrari is I'm sure Hamilton will probably have to do a lot of lift and coast, so overtaking won't be quite as easy as it was for Max Verstappen. But even so, Hamilton has a lot of work to do if he wants to score some points. Teammate Charles Leclerc should get a few overtakes in in the dry and get himself up the field, but I don't think he'll reach a top five, as I think that that could just be out of reach from him especially given the fact he probably also has to do a lot on lift and coast during the Grand Prix. For Red Bull then, the one driver team continues as Max Verstappen is lining up in P2 on the grid, while teammate Yuki Tsunoda is lining up in P19 after yet another qualifying session for him to forget. Max though did a great job to be P2, but Lando Norris in the McLaren did beat him with a great lap. But how did it compare? Well, let's take a look at the two laps. And when you look at these two laps, it is all in the slow speed corners where Max looks to be losing a lot of time. At the sphere section of turn six, seven, eight, and nine, Lando gets the McLaren car turned very nicely and Verstappen loses about six tenths of a second through that section alone. After that, they are actually pretty similar to each other until Lando almost throws a car into the wall at turn 16 and Max gains 8 tenths of a second back on him. In the Grand Prix, I do expect a good fight between Max and Lando at the start of the race and if Max gets a good launch, I can see him sending it down the inside on Lando Norris into turn 1 and well, that's probably the last chance Max has at getting involved in the Drivers' Championship for 2025, so he needs to make sure that he can get ahead of Lando at the start. For Mercedes then, they had a mixed session. George Russell qualified well and will be starting in fourth place, but teammate Antonelli also had a shocker like Hamilton and Sonoda, as Antonelli dropped out in Q1 and is starting in 17th place. Mercedes were also able to avoid a penalty after it seemed like they had potentially submitted their setups late to the stewards, but apparently that was not the case. In the Grand Prix, I'm expecting a decent performance from them, and we should see George Russell get to the podium if it is a dry race. If the race is wet, then let's be honest, anything could happen. And finally, for McLaren then, it was pole position for Lando Norris in what was looking like a pretty dominant pole lap until the big snap of oversteer on the exit of turn 16. But honestly, for me, it kind of made his pole lap look even cooler. Teammate Oscar Piastri once again had a disappointing session and will be starting in 5th place on the grid. Piastri's lap was 1 second slower than Lando Norris, but it could have been 1.5 seconds slower. So let's compare the two laps, and when you look at these two laps, the main difference was not actually the slow speed of 6, 7, 8 and 9, although Norris was still faster there. Nope, the main area seems to be on the run through turns 11 and 12, where Norris was simply more committed 
and more comfortable in turning the car at higher speeds, as Piastri loses a bunch of time through these corners. I am surprised that through turn 16, Piastri didn't gain more time on Norris, which tells me that Oscar wasn't exactly perfect through that section either. In the Grand Prix for Lando Norris, he needs to nail the start and hold off Max Verstappen. And for Oscar Piastri, he just needs to keep it clean. Oscar has pretty much put himself out of the championship now, and if he does want to win, he probably needs a bit of help from Max Verstappen at the race start, and it's not help that would really help Lando Norris, because it would probably mean Lando Norris doesn't score any points. So, with that in mind then, what are my top 5 for the Las Vegas Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P4 will be Carlos Sainz in the Williams. P3 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, because I don't think he's going to have the race pace of the top two. In P2, I'm going to go for George Russell in the Mercedes, and then that does mean I am going to go for Lando Norris to win the Las Vegas Grand Prix, and pretty much seal the world championship for himself. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.